before we get to the draft, we come across free agency first. I believe free agency ends March 15th. With that being said, I know you sent me a list of possible free agents going into this year. And I don't know if you want to just go over some of those positions and who you like, who you don't like, who you think that the Bears might wind up targeting and signing here in the free agency. Actually, I think it may be one of the best free agents classes that I remember in a long time, right? I think there's like a player at every single position this year that I think would be a bigger signing than Tremaine Edmonds was last year. Um, in terms of running back, because I'm just going through position by position, I mean, we've agreed at this point, you never pay for a running back. It's just foolish. Um, I'm okay with taking anybody on like a one-year deal, right? Just because, and then the money just disappears. Saquon Barkley's there, Tony Pollard, Josh Jacobs, Derrick Henry, Austin Eckler, DeAndre Swift. Any one of those guys would be, you know, an impressive addition to the backfield. And if you are going young with your quarterback position, you probably want to get like a good running back to solidify your run game and make him the focus of the uh, offense instead of the young quarterback and give him all that pressure. However, with Shane Waldron being the offensive coordinator, and this is where I think it gets a little bit juicy, Shane Waldron is um, one of, in the terms of the measurables and the statistics, he runs 11 personnel, which is one tight end, one, one running back, right? So three wide receivers on the field all at the same time, usually one running back, no fullback, and then a tight end somewhere. He is one of the highest percentages of people who run out that formation. So I think when you look at that and you look at who Shane Waldron has had, to work with in his past. It was like Cooper Cup, um, Robert Woods, and I forget the third main receiver that year, but I think it was Odell Beckham. You know, DK Tyler Lockett and Yeah, you were thinking Jackson, Rams. Smith, Jackson Smith and Jigba. Well, yeah, he was a he was a passing game coordinator with the Rams. Oh, okay. He was the passing game coordinator, not the offensive, but he helped, you know, design the offensive passing system. Um, so he is a guy with like a big set of like trio wide receivers. Like the top three guys need to be really consistent. Three guys that are going to be on the field almost all the time, right? Like, yeah, you'll sub guys in for exhaustion and stuff like that. But I think you're going to see a pretty significant overhaul at the wide receiver position this offseason. And money is starting to not look thin because I think the Bears have like the second or third most cap space. But that's going to go quickly if you re-sign Tevin Jenkins. If you re-sign Jalen Johnson. So receiving wise, we have T Higgins, which is almost guaranteed to leave. I don't think Cincinnati can afford him. We have T Higgins and Tyler Boyd. And Tyler Boyd. So so I don't think between those two guys, I don't think both of them stay in Cincinnati. One of them is going to hit the market for sure. Yeah. And either one of those guys is a one or a two on most teams. Um, so I think if you would do that next to Right, this is where like all the team building stuff kind of comes into play, and everybody's obsessed with Marvin Harrison Jr. and taking him second overall, which is just like a bad team building decision. He might be the best player in the draft, according to some, but like we've seen the wide receiver position and how deep it is, even this year. Like there's second and third round guys that would have probably gone in the first round last year, and it always depends on the draft. And however, if you're team building and you can get Tyler Boyd or Curtis Samuel or Gabe Davis or Michael Pittman Jr., or T. Higgins, and you get them at like a, a decent contract or a fair rate, and now all of a sudden, do we need to draft the number one wide receiver in the draft at two? That's just like a team-building thing, right? Like, where do you get more value in it? So if you have three wide receivers out on the field all the time, like, they can't all have the ball. So you're going to have Marvin Harrison Jr., DJ Moore, and then, I don't know, you sign a big guy. One of them isn't getting the ball all the time with Justin Fields. I'm sorry. It's just honest. Justin Fields is not about to start turning into a 400 yards per week passer. Somebody's going to get upset, right? I'd be interested, but I think in terms of Shane Waldron and what he wants on this team, I think you might see a little bit of like a wide receiver room overhaul. DJ Moore for sure is staying. I think some of your depth guys might stay. Tyler Scott's like a given. I would hope Valus Jones Jr. is gone. He proven can't play this position. Uh, Equinemius St. Brown, maybe. I feel like he was kind of a holdover from Getsy as well because of the Packers connection. But I think what you're going to see is like, I would love to see Michael Pittman Jr. He's probably going to be too expensive. But a guy like Curtis Samuel, I'm cool with. Even Darnell Mooney kind of re-signing at a team-friendly deal. But I think his, I think from his perspective, he's out outstayed his welcome. And then, yeah, anybody like Tyler Board or somebody like that would be an awesome second big body receiver that I would just love to see on this team, like compliment DJ Moore.
what Chase Claypool should have been, right? Like that big body red zone threat. Safety. I think you're going to wind up moving on from Eddie Jackson here just due to, you know, the amount he's going to cost you and whatnot. So some of the safeties that are out there, you know, Antoine Winfield Jr., as a um, as a veteran, you have guys are like Xavier McKinney, guys like Jordan Fuller. Um, you got some good names out there as well. I think it's the smart thing to do is to – get a veteran in there and then draft a young guy. Um, I've been pretty high on Kalen Bullock out of USC. I like Kalen Bullock a lot, tall, rangy safety, not the biggest guy in the box, but neither was Eddie Jackson. And you don't really ask him to, especially when you got Jaquan Brisker being like that really heavy run support safety. So I think you could probably just go with like a veteran safety to kind of hold you over and then start grooming like a young safety. And if Detroit's shown us anything that, with a good system, the rookies should slot in pretty well. And as long as you're not asking them to do too much or to innovate from their own position, have the good coach kind of just put them in positions to succeed and kind of walk them through it, you should get a good impact from a high a high draft pick. Even Brian Branch being like a second-round pick. Brian Branch is one of the best safeties in the league very quickly, one of those nickel safety guys. So um, I think the best route the Bears can take is probably to – Go young at safety. You're going to save some money cutting Cody White hair. So at that point, you're probably drafting some young, strong, you know, like lineman types to fill in that gap. And I think guards are not necessarily the easiest thing to replace. And I don't think they think so either because they signed Nate Davis and Nate Davis is not very good. Um, but I think you do need to get younger on the interior line, right? A lot younger. Um, it's one of those things that we don't talk about is like everybody on the interior line is just very old and those legs get tired and <laughs> pretty quickly. And I think the best bet and where to, you know, address the free agent market right now, I think of what you need on your team and those positions where you require some veteran knowledge and some intelligence, you can't, you usually can't get a young center out of the draft and just start them right away. And they just pick up and no issues. So I think center free safety. Free safety is a big one, man. If you get a guy who starts taking risks or doesn't know where to be on the field, you know, that Tampa 2 starts to look really, really Swiss cheesy, right? Pass rush is something that's easy to get in the draft, and those guys are just, you know, they've got a few jobs, right? Like, overall, it's just, hey, there's a quarterback, go get him. I think it's one of the least uh, nuanced type of positions, so I would be okay with that. But even not, if not, one of the best defensive end classes I've seen in a pretty, pretty long time, and Brian Burns is... One of my favorite players, he clearly didn't want to be in Carolina anymore. Uh, it's somebody that obviously Ryan Poles is a big fan of. He tried to get him in the trade, and they said, you know, one of these three guys, and it was Derek Brown, Brian Burns, and DJ Moore. So that'd be an interesting one. If you, I saw that next to Montez Sweat and whoever you get as another defensive tackle, I mean, you become one of the best defensive lines in all of football. That takes your mediocre defense to elite very quickly and you are consistent at that because pass rush is consistent right so it doesn't matter how bad the rest of your positions are they get much better if you go for a guy like brian burns if you're going to do one marquee right you're going to spend that 20 25 30 million dollars on a player per year out of this free agent class i'm cool with uh, a defensive end probably more than any other position when we had the number one overall pick last year when we were trading that was a scenario that was thrown out there too we'll trade it to the colts and have Michael Pittman Jr. be part of that trade. Well, you could just go out and sign him. Right? Same yeah. thing like you said with Brian Burns. Now you could just go out and sign him. Got the best of both worlds there, right? So, yeah, that DJ Moore thing really, really, really panned out. Yeah.